All right. Good morning, everyone. This is the last topic of the course. After this, we are completely done. What we're going to look at here in this chapter, in the actually there are only two sections in this chapter, are addressing something called systems of equations. We're going to learn four different methods of solving them. The last one is called Kramer's Rule, which is the one that I like to use. And first, let's define what is a system. Oops. A system of equations. It's when you have two or more equations with two or more variables. So basically we're looking at when you have two or three or more equa graphs on the same graph and see where, how they behave and how, where they intersect. Here, a solution is where the equations of your system intersect each other. All right, we have, let's look at, in the small system, let's look at two. So there's, Basically, we talked about this earlier in the semester. There are four possibilities. When you have two equations, they can either be parallel, which means they have no solution, They can be the same line in which they have infinite solutions because here every point is a solution. And in parallel, you have two lines, line one and line two, that never intersect, never meet. So here you have line one equals line two. So when the lines, well, we'll talk about this in a second, how they how they relate to each other. Then a third possibility is when they form right triangles to each other. That little symbol there means it forms a 90 degree angle, like, like the corner of a wall or something. We call these perpendicular. And since they intersect, they only have one solution. This is line one, and this is line two. And then the last possibility is where you have line one and line two, and they just intersect at one place. Any other line. The only lines. You have one solution where they intersect. All right, so what determines these? In this first set we looked at, we see that they the slope of line one is the same as slope of line two. That's the same as over here. The slope of line one is the sl same as slope of line two. The only difference in these two, if the same, if you have the same slope, look at the y-intercepts. Here, 
the y-intercepts are not equal. That means they're parallel. In this one, the y-intercepts are equal. That means they're the, they have the same slope, same intercept, they're the same line. Now, the other side here, we can't say anything about the intercept because they could intercept at the y-axis. So we can't say anything about that. Only thing we say about them is that the slopes are not the same. But what makes them different is in the perpendicular, the slopes are opposite signs. So that one's positive, this one has to be negative, and they're flips of each other. These type of equations are called consistent because they have at least one solution. This one's also a consistent solution because it only has what has at least one solution. So these are all consistent. And since this one has no solutions, we call this one inconsistent. So if it has no solutions, it's inconsistent. If it has at least one, it's consistent. All right. Then we have another thing to look at. Now, if if one equation, uh, you have two equations. If one of the equations can be transformed into the other equation, we call that dependent. The dependent is when one equation. is a multiple of another. Like these two here. They're that's a consistent because I have at least one solution and it's dependent because no matter how, for example, uh, x plus y equals two, is the same thing as 2x plus 2y equals 4. Because I could take this equation, multiply it by 2, and I get this equation. So that's why it's dependent. All right. So all everything else is independent. 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 All right, so that's important. Consistent is when you have one or more solutions. Dependent is if one equation is a multiple of the other. All right. So let's look at how to determine which one of these equations we have. Yes, if we graph them, it's pretty straightforward. But we're not going to graph all every equation we get. There are four methods of solving systems 
of equations. The first method is called substitution. The second method is called elimination. The third method is called Kramer's rule. And the fourth is one is graphing. I put that one last because it's, unless your graph is perfect, it's the least accurate of them all. All right, but we'll start with this one. Example one, we have two equations, x minus y equals five, two x plus y equals one. This is line one, this is line two. We're going to solve this one first by substitution. Here are the steps. Choose either equation. Choose either, either equation to use, either variable to solve for, so in this example, I'm going to use line two. It doesn't matter which one, because if these two lines are the, have a solution, it'll be the same no matter what you look at it, where you look at it. So step one, I choose either equation. So I, I choose line two. And I choose either variable to solve for. I'm solving for y. Solve for that variable. So I subtract 2x from both sides. y equals 1 minus 2x. So we'll have to come back to this one. Step 4. Take that equation and plug it into the variable in the other equation. Since we used line two, now we have to use line one. We know that y is equal to one minus two x. So anywhere we see a y, we put a one minus two x. You now have one equation with one variable. Solve for it. So 
So we have one equation with only one variable. The only variable in there is, is x. So let's solve for it. But first get rid of the parentheses. So we have x minus one, negative, negative is a positive, two x. Combine like terms. And then, then we have minus one equals five. We combine like terms. Move the non x to the other side. And solve for x. Divide both sides by three. That's one part of your final answer. Plug that solution into the equation from step one, or step two in this case. to find the other solution. So we know that y might equals one minus two x. We know that x equals two. So y equals one minus two times two. One minus four negative three. So our solution is two negative three. It's the point where the lines intersect. So that's my solution. So that's the substitution method. The next method we're going to discuss, we're going to use the same example, see if we get the same answer, is the elimination method. So we're going to use the same equation. Two X plus Y equals one. For elimination method, the first step is Both equations must be in standard form. Remember, that's AX plus BY equals C. So that's first step. Check. They're both in standard form. Choose which variable to eliminate. It must have a 
opposite coefficients. All right, so I have my two equations. I see that the easiest one for me to, to eliminate is y. Step four says, or step two a says, they have to have this, the same number in front of it. They both have one and they have opposite signs. One's positive, one's negative. That's perfect. If, if they don't have the same opposite coefficients, then multiply one or both equations by any number to make them opposites. Step three. Since we have the same coefficient but different signs, we can go ahead, add the two lines together. x plus 2x is 3x. Negative y plus y cancels out. 5 plus 1 is 6. Solve for the remaining variable. So since x is the only one, we divide both sides by 3. x equals 2. Now, unlike the substitution, where we had to pick one of the two lines, solve for a variable, and plug that in there, in this method, we use both lines at the same time. So once you solve for the remaining variable, Plug that solution into either of the original equations. And solve for the remaining variable. So, since x equals two, I can come to either one of these two equations. So I'll use line two. It is 2x plus y equals one. I'll plug in two, so it's two times two plus y equals one. And subtract four from both sides y is equal to, since 4 is negative, the answer is negative, 4 minus 1 is 3. And that is your solution. They will intersect at that point. 
we'll get the same answer. Even if we use the other line, line one, x minus y equals five. Put two in place of x. Subtract two. Five minus two is three. Change the signs. Y is negative three. So you get the same answers. Let's do a couple more examples of these before we jump into Kramer's rule. Example two, or we'll use two x plus y equals two. That's line one and line two is x minus y equals seven. First method is substitution. Actually, we could do them both next to each other. And then this side here will be elimination. So substitution, first step, choose an equation and then choose for a variable. I will use line one. And then I'm solving for y, because that'd be the easiest one. So I subtract two x from both sides, y equals two minus two x. We'll come back to this equation to get the y value. Since I used line one in the first step in substitution, I gotta use line two in the second step. X minus y equals seven. Anywhere we see a y, we have to plug in two minus two x. So we get x minus, in parentheses, 2 minus 2x equals 7. We have one equation with only one letter inside there. Solve for it. So distribute that negative sign. We get x minus 2 plus 2x equals 7. Combine like terms, 2x plus, three, 2x plus x is 3x, minus 2 equals 7, and solve for x. I add 2 to both sides, and then divide by 3. So x equals 3. I take my first equation that I found, and then this variable, so I get y equals 2 minus 2x, and anywhere I see an x, I put a 3. 2 minus 2 times 3, 2 minus 6 is negative 4. So my solution 
is at 3, negative 4. That's the elimination, uh, substitution method. How do we start the elimination method? Before that. Are they in standard form? Yes, so we have 2x plus y equals 2, x minus y equals 7. They're in standard form. Is what variable we'll get rid of? So now here's why. Are their coefficients opposites of each other? Yes, they're both they're both one, one's positive and negative. So we can just add these two equations together. 2x plus x is 3x. The y's cancel. 2 plus 7 is 9. So x equals 3. What do we do with that? It, yeah, pick either one of these two equations and plug that in there. Let's, let's do line two. We're going to do line two. X minus Y equals seven. So anywhere I see an X, I put a three. Solve for Y. We add y to both sides to get rid of the negative coefficient. And then we subtract 7. So y is equal to negative 4. So our answer is 3, negative 4. Which way is better, you think? Yeah, that's obviously it's much shorter. Let's do another example with those guys. If we were using graphing, how would you graph those? Exactly. Put them in slope intercept form, graph them. And it all depends on how nice your graph is, whether you get a good answer or not. Example three. We have 4x plus 3y equals 11. Negative 5x plus 2y equals 15. Yeah, on the sheet, the sheets I gave you all, it's one off. This, is, this should be example four. The last one is example three. We're going to do substitution here. And elimination. So in substitution, which equation you want to use? So we use line one. All right. So 4x plus 3y equals 11. What variable? So let's solve for y. We get subtract 4x from both sides. Yeah, this one, there is no easy way out. 11 minus 4x. Divide both sides by 3. So y is equal to 11 minus 4x over 3. We'll come back to that later.
step two says use the other equation and plug that in there. So since we used line one originally, we have to use line two here. Negative 5x plus 2y equals 15. Anywhere we see a y, we put that 11 minus 4x over 3 into it. We can't do anything inside the parentheses, so we have to get rid of the parentheses. So we multiply the two only to the tops because, well, it's two over one. So that goes on the top, that goes on the bottom. So we get negative 5x, positive 2 times positive 11 is positive 22. Positive negative is a negative. Four, 2 times 4 is 8x over 3. Can't combine any like terms. We have a fraction and an equal sign, so let's get rid of the fraction. The LCD is yeah, it's the only D. So we multiply each term by three. Positive times negative is negative. Three times five is fifteen x. The threes cancel here. Three times fifteen is forty five. There's it's a positive one here, so we can just drop the parentheses. If it was a minus, we have to distribute it. Oops, 15x. We got rid of parentheses, so we combine like terms. Negative 15x, negative 8x, they're both negative. So it's negative 23x plus 22 equals 45. Solve for x. Subtract 22. We have negative 23x equals positive 23. Change the signs. And divide. What do we do with that? Yeah, plug this one way back up here. So this comes all the way down here. So y is equal to 11 minus 4 times negative 1 over 3. Negative, negative is a positive. 4 times 1 is 4. 11 plus 4 is 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So my point of intersection was negative 1, 5. So that's substitution. A lot of work. Let's try elimination. So first step. They're both in standard form.
subtract five, I mean, put the other equation down. Now comes the hard part. Which variable do you want to eliminate? Okay. So that means we have to have the same number, different signs, which means we have to multiply both of these equations by something to make them that. Very good. So everything inside this parenthesis in the equation is multiplied by negative two. Four times negative two is negative eight x. Positive and negative is a negative. Three times two is six y equals negative 22. Positive three. Negative positive is negative. Five times three is 15. Positive, positive is a positive. Two times three is six. 15 times three is 45. We have the same number, different. So we can add the two lines now. So these will disappear. This will give us negative 23x equals positive 23. Change the signs. and divide by 23, negative one. Next step, to where? Yeah, so let's pick the second one. So we pick the line two, negative five X plus two Y equals 15. Plug this in place of one, or in place of x. So x is negative one. Negative negative is a positive. Get rid of five. So we have. 2y, 15 minus 5 is 10. y is equal to 5. So we see our point is negative 1, 5. So those are pretty easy equations. And they're, they got pretty good answers. Let's see what happens when they don't. Example four, which is actually example five on your sheet. A. X minus three Y equals one. That's line one. Line two is negative two X plus six Y equals five. Substitution there. Elimination, that's something. So in substitution, what's our first equation we're going to pick? Yeah, line one would be easier. So x minus 3y equals 1. And solve for which variable? Yeah, perfect. The choices there help define whether it's going to be an easy or a very lengthy process. So there's your first equation. So now we've got to plug that in equation two. Negative 2x plus 6y equals 5. So that goes in place of x.
negative two, one plus three y plus six y equals five. Negative two times one is negative two. Negative six y plus six y So what does that mean? So what does that tell us about the lines? Very good. Lines are parallel. It'll be seen a lot easier in the elimination. So in this one, we're going to choose, let's get rid of X. So to get rid of x, we need to have multiply that one by two. Gives us two x minus six y equals two. Add the two lines. Since they don't equal, we have no solution. Parallel lines. It's inconsistent. and independent. Another way you could write the answer, instead of writing no solutions, we could write that, which means it's an empty set. The answer doesn't exist. All right, let's look at part B of that question. 2x plus 3y equals 6. That's line 1. And line 2, 4x plus 6y equals 12. Yeah, you, you, know, you can see this. Let's see what happens when we do these. So we're using, I'm going to choose line one. Solve for X. So we have 2x equals 6 minus 3y divided by 2. Six minus 3y 
over two. Since we used line one in the first step, we have to use line two in the second. So it's four X plus six Y equals 12. And where we're seeing X, you plug that in there. So that plus 6y equals 12. Fortunately, in this one, the denominator cancels. So that goes in there twice. So we multiply. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6y. Combine like terms. But since all the variables are gone, every point's an answer. No matter what X you put in there or what Y, you get an answer. So we have an infinite number of solutions. They're the same line. Yeah, it's a lot more apparent with the elimination method. Multiply the top one by negative two. We get negative four X minus six Y equals negative 12. Second one stays the same, zero, zero, zero. So clearly you see that elimination method is a lot easier to do and it gives us answers much faster. Any questions so far? All right, let's look at a couple of example application problems. Example six, snack mixes. All right, at maxes, caramel corn worth $2.50 per pound. is mixed with honey roasted nuts worth $7.50 per pound. In order to get 20 pounds of a mixture, worth $4.50 per pound,
how much of each snack is used. Okay. How do we solve this? Do I put what first? Two fifty. Plus seven fifty equals twenty pounds. The what? So we we'll, what would be X? Times what? Very good. Because this is caramel corn and that's honey roasted nuts. You have to you have to distinguish them apart. Okay, if you had twenty pounds worth of mixture. So to get Worth four fifty per pound. How much of each has to be used? Equals what? Yep, but still 20 pounds. So how would be, what, what we're going to use which method to solve this? Okay. I would, I like elimination, but we use substitution. What would you do first? Always get rid of the decimals. Because decimals are the same as fractions. In other words, how would we get rid of the decimals in, in both of these? We can multiply, we could do one of two ways, yeah. Since we haven't moved it one decimal over, we can multiply by 10. But since they're all 50 cents each, we can multiply by two. Because two times 250 is $5. Two times 750 is 15. But we can multiply both of these by 10, which will give us 25x plus 75y equals 200. 45x plus 45y equals 200. So what would be your next step? So we're using substitution. So which which equation are you going to use? Okay, so we're going to use step one. 45x 
plus 45y equals 200. Which variable? So we've got 45x equals 200 minus 45. Divide both sides by 45. gives us 200 minus 45y over 45. That's an x. Now plug this inside equation two. No, that was equation two. We have to use the equation one. 25x plus 75y equals 200. And we know that x equals that. So that we got 25, 200 minus 45y over 45 plus 75y equals 200. We can cancel a little bit about the denominators. So five goes into 25, five times. Five goes into 45, nine times. So we have 5 times 200 minus 45y all over 9. Distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So we have 1,000 over 9 minus 225y over 9. Multiply each term by nine to get rid of the denominator. Yeah, 1,000 minus 225y plus 675y. Combine like terms. 675 minus 225 is 450. Subtract 1,000 from both sides. and divide by 450 the zeros cancel so we have 80 over 45 5 goes into 80 one 16 times 5 goes into 45 9 times One and seven ninths.
So we have one seven ninth pounds of the nuts. And X is equal to 200 minus 45 Y over 45. So we have 200 minus 45, 16 over 9. So 200 minus 80 over 45. 120 over 45. Five goes into 45 nine times. Five goes into 24 times. Three goes into nine three times. Three goes into eight times. So it's two and two thirds. So that's how many pounds goes in each snack. That's where we set it up. We set it up that 4.5 times X, 4.5 times Y equals 20. So this is how many pounds of each we get. Example seven. An airplane, airplane flies 3,000 miles distance. From Los Angeles to New York. With a tailwind. In five hours. The return trip. from New York to Los Angeles against the wind takes six hours. Find the speed of the airplane in still air. This is a distance problem. So it's a motion problem. Distance equals rate times time. So we have the rate, the time, and the distance. Fortunately for us, the distance is the same. The time of trip A was five hours, and the trip back was six hours.
Okay, so what is our speed? So we have the speed of the airplane plus the tailwind and the speed of the airplane minus, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, plus and minus the tailwind. So let's see what these look like. We have x plus t times 5 equals 3,000. We have x minus t times 6 equals 3,000. That becomes 5x plus, well, we can divide both all of these. So we divide that one by five and this one by six. That will give us x plus t equals 600. x minus t equals 500. Add these two equations together, the t's cancel. So we have 2x equals 1100. Divide by 2. So the speed of the airplane is 500 miles per hour. Which is about right. Now, 